Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Madison and today I have a knitting podcast for you. This is episode 9 and this is just a video where I talk about my works in progress, my finished objects, my knitting plans, maybe some acquisitions, and I also dabble in hand spinning so I have some spinning stuff to talk about too. Yeah I think I've got something to cover all of those categories today. So if you're new here I live in New York City and I just moved into this apartment like a month or so ago so this couch I think is my new kind of filming spot because it is also becoming my like cozy, crafty <laughs> corner. It's uh, the smaller one of the two couches that we have in our living room, so this tends to be the place where I leave all of my works and projects just kind of draped over the sides, or like all of my project bags tend to like pile up here. So this is my knitting couch, is what I've decided. Um, and if I look down here, it's because I've got my iPad and I have notes on what I want to talk about because I feel like there's quite a few things to go through. The last like week or so here in New York have been really kind of gloomy and overcast and pretty chilly actually. We've been in like the 50s um, Fahrenheit. So I have been able to kind of wear my like knitted and pullover that I showed in my last podcast. I've been getting a lot of wear out of that uh, the past couple of weeks, which was exciting because right when I finished it, we were getting like a little spell of really warm days. So I was worried that it was gonna have to wait until next fall or winter for me to be able to wear it. But I've been wearing it on like any day that I can. <laughs> and I love it. I really love that sweater. Um, I would knit a second one for sure. So lots of knitting things to talk about today. I think with the gloomy kind of vibes that we've been having in the city, I've also been really in like cozy knitting mood. So I feel like I've been making pretty good progress on my projects and I'll start with a finished object. And disclaimer that this isn't 100% finished, but the knitting itself is finished. I just need to steak it. So this is my cutting edge vest uh, by Albina McLaughlin. She's the designer. And it is, <laughs> I'm like, wait, how do I do this again? Um, this is knit up in Newtoden. It was all kind of little scrappy bits or little charms. I made it with some leftovers from other projects and I've also ordered, I know at least once, maybe twice I've ordered, you can kind of get a mixed bag of charms is what they call them. They're just like little one-offs um, of either like color tests or like leftovers from previous collections. And so I had a bunch of those and I kind of just put them all in a basket together and then I knew I had a lot of blue and gray, so I figured that would kind of be most of the vest. And then um, kind of just, I just picked colors based on how I was feeling and then would knit with them for as long as I wanted to. And um, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. I didn't really want like full on stripes. So it's, it's all marled. It's kind of hard to tell in some places, but I actually, never held the same color strand together. This is Nutrient Held Double, I should say that. <laughs> and I knitted it on the recommended needle size, although my gauge was, I think, slightly larger, but I did not swatch and I didn't check my gauge until I was binding off. So it'll be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's hard to tell, but it is all marled different colors together and so there's places where like these are actually two grays but they are so similar in color tone that you can't really tell um, that they are not the same 
and so yeah you can kind of see like I held the same kind of lighter pink like with this pink in here and then into the blue and then I switched to the blues and then got into some grays and browns um, and like this one bright stripe is two different kind of like brown it's like a brown and a yellow held together and then I ended up doing the same color combo as the top for the bottom rib and I was kind of hoping that would just balance it out together I don't know it definitely looks very scrappy and and kind of crazy I think but it's fun and it's like a it'll be a nice layering piece I think it's definitely going to be on the slightly more oversized side in terms of sizing wow that was not a good sentence <laughs> Oh well. Um, and yeah, so it's been blocked. I soaked it and it's dried and I need to steak it, which I've never steaked anything before, so I'm a little nervous, but I am definitely going to do it tomorrow because I want to enter it into um, Anna from the Brook Willow knit podcast she has a vest make along going on right now for like two more days uh so i want to enter it into that and yeah i think i will definitely make more of these um i would love to do a solid colored one and albina gives a lot of really great options for like once you steak it you can add on different collar types um she has an option for a split hem or just, I mean, I did the continuous rib hem version because um, that felt faster and easier <laughs> than trying to figure out what to do. But um, so yeah, all that to say, I think I will definitely be making another one of these in the future um, maybe sizing down and um, I'm like, <laughs> that was the only thing is that since it's steaked you can't really try it on but I'm like I think it's gonna fit it might be it's definitely gonna be a little oversized um, and I will definitely be using it as a layering piece in the winter I don't think this is something I would wear on its own just because it is so Wooly and you've got the Nutriden held double so it's very warm, but I think it'll be great over a thinner turtleneck um, Like those cotton ones from J. Crew. I think they're cotton um, That are just like they're the tissue turtlenecks. They're like my favorite things. I live in them all winter long so That's what I'm gonna do <laughs> Um one last thing I wanted to say about this, sorry, I'm getting like Nutriden wool fuzz in my nose now. I have been curious about wooden needles again. I think I mentioned this in one of my recent videos, but ever since my mom gifted me a Chowgu metal needle interchangeable set, I've been obsessed with those and have pretty much only been knitting with metal needles but then um, I have just been like wanting to try out some wooden needles because I do I like both wood and metal needles and I think it's kind of fun to switch it up depending on the project so I knitted this with some clover bamboo needles that I liked but I think um, but I think the bamboo with the Nutiden, it was almost like too grippy on the needles. So because of that, I was getting kind of antsy to finish the project by the end, I think. So going forward, I'll probably stick to metal needles with Nutiden. I think is kind of like my personal ideal combo in terms of like, yarn and needles but i think it's fun to have different options in terms of needles 
for different projects. Like I have, I'll get into it, but I have, I have other projects that are on some different wooden needles that I'm really, really loving, but I keep just like, ooh, hugging this. Um, so yeah, <laughs> she will be steaked very, very soon. Um, I am a big fan of Albina McLaughlin's patterns in general. I think she writes them in a really clear way and I also love that she gives a lot of different options for like collars or the ribbing or different like finishings. Um, I think it's just like it lets you really create a finished object that feels like perfect for you. So. I think she's a great designer. I love her, love her aesthetic and love her patterns and everything. So I'm like, Chris, my feet are gonna fall asleep here in a second. I'm all crisscrossed. Just getting comfy. Hope you're getting comfy too. Um, <laughs> just chilling. So that's my only finished object. And the next two things I will just talk about pretty quickly since I've talked about them both in past podcast episodes and this one in particular I've talked about for many a podcast episode I believe at this point I started this in January yes it's still going on it's still a whip uh, and this is my big cozy cardi by Andrea Mowry and we're at the point now where when I work on it, it's pretty much a full-on blanket on my lap while I knit. So it's definitely big. <laughs> and I'm hoping it is really just the coziest cardigan ever once I finish it, if that ever happens. But I've been making good progress. I really wanted to... Um, I've been kind of waffling between wanting to set like hard deadlines for myself on this and then also not wanting to do that because I know it's such a long kind of marathon knit that I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to feel like I need to like knit a certain amount um, by a certain date. But with this project specifically, I've found that it's been really nice to like really prioritize it for a couple weeks and make a good amount of progress and then maybe like set it down for a week and like work on something else and then come back to it. Um, and I've been really conscious of just making sure that I don't set it down for too long, that it just never gets done. So I'm in, I think, what is my last sprint towards finishing the body um, and this whole piece is the body portion of the sweater and then it has a very interesting construction but I don't want to give any of it away but it will eventually have a shawl collar that's all in Surrey that I've got here um, it's kind of a more bluish purpley gray from Woolberry um and it's so soft i'm like cannot wait to get to the surrey and just have a change of yarn on this project because <laughs> i've been knitting with this um body yarn um i don't know if that's what you call it this main main yarn um let me find my skein where did it go um I've been knitting with this for so long, it feels like. I mean, now it's been January, February, March, April, basically four months that I've been knitting on this. And um, this is Sock Hill Farm. Their sport weight, I picked this up at Rhinebeck last October. I really love this yarn. Um, and I forget now what the fiber content actually is. I know it's 100% American wool, but I don't know if they actually listed out the breed on the label now that I'm thinking about it. So this definitely has a farmier, more rustic, you know, feel to it. It's not super wash soft by any means. 
um, but I think it'll still be cozy. It'll definitely, it's definitely very like warm. It keeps me very warm when I knit on it. Sometimes I have to like try to put it <laughs> to the side of me or something because I start overheating. <laughs> Um, what else to say about this? Oh, so back to wanting to finish this. I have been really focusing on this this last week. I only have a few inches left. I've got my little chipmunk <laughs> progress keeper keeping me company. Um, I only have a few inches left to knit, so I'm really determined to finish this up this weekend and then I might set it down for a while because I've got some ambitious goals for my knitting this next month that I will talk about a little bit later, but I don't know if this is gonna be a huge priority in May. We'll see. So we'll see when I get to the shawl collar and everything, but um, I'm really trying to at least get the body of the sweater off my needles in the next 48 hours. <laughs> we will see. Um, so fingers crossed on that, that I get that done. I will. I've been really, I've been really focused on it and really happy with my progress and I'm feeling excited to like check off one step of the process of making that cardigan. <laughs> the next whip that I want to talk about is this sock, which I had started in my last episode of my podcast. I think I was like to here. I actually just bound off this sock this morning. I was so close to getting all of that pink in there, but just had a little bit of the next color coming in. Um, which is whatever. It's on the back, so it's no big deal. But um, this is another DRK everyday sock. I've been knitting these like almost nonstop this year, I think. Yeah, it kind of started at the end of last year. I've almost got the pattern memorized <laughs> at this point. So yeah, this is one sock, and then I cast it on the second one this morning so we literally just started and I like to knit this kind of on the go it's not a super high priority project I really just carry this little sock project bag around with me if I'm commuting somewhere if I'm going to work if I go to the gym if I'm in the car, um, basically if I leave the house, I have this with me. I think that's all I really want to say about that sock. I knit all of my DRK socks pretty much the same. Oh, I guess I should say what yarn this is. This is Woolen Zanosh, um collab with the Earth Tones girl. It's her falling in love colorway that she released last fall and I picked this up at Woolen Folk during the Rhinebeck weekend um, at the Woolens and Nosh booth and I had actually knitted this up into a pair of vanilla socks top down. They ended up being too big because the Woolens and Nosh sock yarn is just ever so slightly thicker than a superwash merino sock yarn um, at least in my opinion my gauge is larger with this yarn uh, than it is with usual uh, superwash nylon yarn blends um, so i had knitted this yarn into a vanilla sock with my usual stitch counts and not really thinking too much about it. Completely finished the pair. They were way too big. <laughs> this yarn, it was just too good to like not have the socks fit perfectly. So I frogged the pair pretty much immediately, but then had it sitting around for a while 
and just recasted it on a month or so ago and it's just been my like on the go knitting is what I guess I will call it and or if I just need something super easy the DRK everyday sock is just two by two rib so it's nice to just have something that's doesn't really require that much thinking especially once you get through the heel portion and you can just like knit ribbing for days for the for the leg of it so yeah um, but I also wanted to show off I don't know if I've shown this but this is a new ish project bag that I got from knitting Nelly and I have one other sock project bag from her that I have been obsessed with since I got it last fall and I managed to snag this in a recent shop update from hers. She isn't sewing, I don't think, as much as she was previously, but is doing very occasional shop updates in like very small batches. Um, so I was... And I thought this was really cute and very spring timey. And I was so excited when I snagged one. I was like, <laughs> it was one of those things where I like set a reminder. I was like refreshing as the shop update was supposed to go live and um, checked out as fast as I possibly could. And I got it. So I just love the colors and I love her aesthetic just in general. So, um, one day I hope to have bigger, like either a shawl or a sweater size project bag from her, I think would be so lovely. So cute. Um, okay, I'll set that, I'll set her here. I have two more whips I wanna talk about. The first one I pulled out of hibernation and I've been so excited about it again. I can't believe I ever set it down. <laughs> And it is my pressed flower shawl. Look at it, she's grown since the last time. I think, I'm trying to remember when was, when was the last episode that I showed her on. It might have been a while. I know I showed a swatch right after I finished this hand spun, but I don't know if I've actually shown progress recently, but I have picked her back up and I'm obsessed. I'm so happy with how it's looking. Um, it's all like bunched up on this cable now. <laughs> I'm like, how is the best way to show this? But there's a close up of some of my hand spun. I'm hoping, I really wanted to start with, so, let me back up a little bit. This yarn is the main color, the green color, is Explore Knits and Fibers. Rocky's DK is the base, and it's in their prickly pear color. I got this from a D stash on Etsy, I think. I don't even know how I found it, but somehow I did. <laughs> and so I have two skeins of this. And this is all I've used of the first one so far. So I'm thinking I'll have plenty. Um, and then the contrast color is hand spun that I spun up in February. I purchased a fiber advent from Nest Fiber, who is one of my favorite fiber dyers for sure. I'm in her monthly fiber club and I think her colors are just like so stunning. I mean she does a lot with pinks too and I'm always a sucker for pink so that definitely helps. <laughs> um, and she did a very cute Valentine's Day advent. I knew that Nest Fiber did advents because Tashi who has a wonderful um, mostly spinning but also knitting podcast here on youtube i'm sure you've heard of her uh she got a christmas nest fiber advent and i think she actually did last year's 
Valentine's Day advent too. But anyway, she didn't have her channel then, so she filmed her Christmas advent spinning and I love the color. So I was like, I need the next Nest Fiber Advent there is. And I missed out on Fiber Advents for Christmas because I wasn't really spinning at the time of ordering them. So that's how I justified buying the Valentine Day Advent. Um, and I'm just so happy with how it turned out. I keep like hugging it. I have another skein that's in my bedroom now, so I won't get it. But this is all, this is the first half of that spin. So each day, it was 14 day advent, each day had one ounce of kind of mystery fiber. So each day I would split the fiber in half and I had two bobbins going at each time because I knew I wanted to do a two ply. So I would spin half to each of the bobbins and then at the end I just applied it all together. So it is all, it's all pretty much matched up um, based on the day. There's some crossover, you know, where like one day will like be plied with the next day for a little bit or whatnot. Um, but you can't really tell because all the colors go together. So who's to say what's really going on here? But um, this is it. So what I was trying to say is that this is starts with day one of the spin. And so we're working out, um, you know, through the advent essentially. And I really wanted it to be that way, but my spinning definitely became more consistent over the two weeks that I was doing it. Uh, so it's the most, I feel like inconsistent or most like slightly thick and thin in the beginning. And then I'm hoping that by like, I think, like, just now it's starting to feel a little bit more even. All this to say is that there have been some thicker parts. So I'm just assuming that this is all kind of gonna, you know, the blocking magic is gonna take care of some of the maybe inconsistencies. Um, not that you can really tell once it's knitted up, but the hand spun is definitely, like, thicker than the explore knits which i think is fine it's fun to like mix different weights but um and i feel like shawls are you can get away with that ease more easily i have no idea that's just what i'm telling myself <laughs> um so yeah very very happy to be working on this again and Knitting with my hand spun has definitely had me kind of re-inspired about spinning during the moving apartments situation and everything. Having to pack up all of my fiber and my spinning wheels, it's definitely taking me longer to kind of get those back out. And I haven't really found a good routine with spinning. Um, it's something that I have to really like think about and be like, okay, I'm going to spin at this time on this day. Uh, whereas knitting, I'm just like, I'm always, I'm always knitting. I don't know. Um, I know Tashi, to shout out her again, said once that she is a capital S spinner and a lowercase k knitter where so like she you know spinning is like her number one thing and I think at least right now I'm like a a capital K knitter and then a lowercase s spinner I love both of them but I'm also still very very brand new to spinning I've been spinning less than a year um, so it's just not as ingrained in my everyday, I think, as knitting is, but I have to remember there also was a time where knitting was not part of my, like, everyday. It was, like, a very occasional thing for me at one point, so I think I'll get there with spinning. I just need to... It'll just come. It'll come when it's supposed to come, and 
yeah but i still have a lot of fun spinning and i'll talk about more spinning stuff later but i have about an hour until i have to finish this and leave the house i am going to a brooklyn yarn crawl event tonight i'm very excited i'm excited to also just go to more yarn stores this weekend for the yarn crawl i love when there's events and trunk shows and everything so um that's what i'm doing tonight but now we're gonna get on to my last whip before <laughs> before i go off and uh start talking about random stuff um my last whip is also an exciting one and i've got i finally cleared this out what did i have living in here I think I just had yarn skeins in this project bag of like an upcoming project that I've swatched for that I have not started and probably will not start for some time because I have a lot of plans for the next couple of months. Um, so I finally emptied that out and I'm using this as a proper project bag again. And this is a petite knit bag. Oh yeah, I guess you can see petite knit right there. Um, and I think it's so cute and I love, it just like cinches up and um, has all these like pockets, not to like reveal my next whip. This is a new whip. I just casted it on last week, I think. I've been working on it for a week and I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. So what have we got going on here? It's called, the fairy dreams cardigan it is a cardigan out of the lina magazine i will put a link to it because i am not remembering which issue it is off the top of my head i believe it's issue 15 but i will link to it below in case that is incorrect but um so i just started with the bottom body this is the bottom ribbing had some really pretty cabling in it um i feel like i haven't really seen that i don't know i guess at least the projects that i have like in my queue i haven't really incorporated any sort of cabling in the ribbing so i thought that was really fun um and then the body is like kind of a combo of lace and stockinette so i've got some lace going on i know it's like hard to see until it blocks out but eee! i'm really really excited about the i mean i think the pattern is really beautiful and very like feminine and dainty looking it's kind of like a three-quarter length cardigan it's very very cute but I'm very, very excited about my yarn combo, which um, is both La Bien Aimé. So this is the same colorway. This is La Bien Aimé's Cash Merino base, and this is their um, Mohair Silk base. And both are in the colorway Midwestern Sunset which is an exclusive for a yarn store in Lee Summit, Missouri, which is in the Kansas City area. And it's called Unwind Fiber Arts. So shout out local yarn stores. And so yes, this is an exclusive colorway for Unwind. Um, I actually just checked the other day because I featured this yarn in a different recent video and they still have some available on their site so that is exciting i think the colors are really pretty this is my swatch i'm like <laughs> i'm just waving it around that's my swatch <laughs> i swatched for this which is a big step for me personally <laughs> um and what was I going to say? So I am sticking with the recommended needle size, which is a US 4. And I'm loving the combo. I haven't, it's so soft. 
I haven't really knit with cashmere. It's not all cashmere. It's a it's a cashmere blend, but um, I haven't really used any sort of cashmere or mohair recently. So it's like really, really nice. It's a nice change from like the 100% woolly wool that I've been using recently, I think. So I have really big goals to finish this within the month of May. That might be crazy, but I am determined to like make this my sort of priority project for the month. I think this is going to be number one along with my pressed flowers will be second priority. And that's going to be really my main focus for the month of May. And this is getting into like my, my plans. Um, so yeah, those are my knitting plans for May. <laughs> this is number one. Pressed flowers is number two. I also want to talk about the needles that I'm using because I'm trying out some Lantern Moon needles. I'm like, can you read that? <laughs> Um, and these are wooden needles um, and they have a swivel swivel tip I don't know how else to say that but um, if you go like this the needles not coming off so the cord swivels around which has been nice and I really like these types of cords that are I don't really know what the technical term for this is but it feels very similar to the chai gu chow gu red lace needles um so this feels really similar to my metal interchangeable set um but they're wooden i'm really liking them so i have a feeling that it's like this these needles and my chow gu's are gonna be like my for life needles and yeah so just a heads up that I'm testing out lantern moon needles and am really liking them so far <laughs> okay we need to keep things moving along because I feel like I've been talking for too long now I think I got my like spinning stuff on this side so Let's get into some spinning chat, and then I have a few acquisitions that I want to share with you. But I'm going to take a sip of water first. I, this is so random, but I am so addicted to this huge Yeti water bottle. My best friend got it for my birthday for me a couple years ago, and I like can't live without it. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to the fiber stuff, I will put this down for a second. <laughs> um, my Hello Yarn Weekender Spin is still ongoing, and that is another thing that I am determined to finish in May, along with that cardigan, is this spin and this is I brought a little bit of the fiber over because the bobbin is on my wheel so I don't really want to take that off right now but this is the hello yarn fiber that I'm spinning up I have a sweater or what I think will be a sweaters quantity <laughs> worth of fiber for it um, and I am planning to knit the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry. This is probably about one ounce of fiber and I am going to spin this up this weekend and then after this I will have 12 ounces of fiber left to spin. Coming into this month I really wanted to spin four ounces which each bag of fiber is four ounces so I really want to get through one bag of fiber each week and then I'd be done with the spin. So that didn't happen this last month, which is totally fine. I was really in the knitting mojo mood and we were just vibing with that. But 
I have a lot of other things I would like to spin and I don't want to start new spinning projects without finishing this one, especially since it's so big. Um, or at least this is like the biggest spin that I've done so far. I think it'll, it's about 20 to 24 ounces of fiber that I've been spinning. Um, so after this little bump that I have, I have three bags left and I think I can get through those three bags in the month of May is my goal. I even, I like really want to be plying the yarn at the end of May is my dream. So every, every project I'm like, we'll see. Letting you know that finishing that spin is high on my list of goals for the month of May. Other than that spinning project, I really have not been doing any other spinning. I And I've been spinning that on my Ashford eSpinner 3, which I love her so much. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan. And... Yeah, so I've been neglecting my beloved Lindrum double treadle. I need to get her back out and get a project on her, but maybe soon. Um, other than that, I did dabble in some fleece cleaning, which I kind of was previewing <laughs> earlier. I was holding this up. Um, some fleece cleaning this week. So I have bought two fleeces so far. I've had them for a few months now. They've just been sitting in boxes waiting to be cleaned. Um, but then we ended up moving and so I kind of held off on buying the rest of the supplies that I needed to clean the fleeces until we got into the new apartment. But basically what I needed was like buckets and some like I got a sweater drying rack um, to kind of like lay the wet fleece on and I had to get power scour I got a really like heavy-duty candy like cooking thermometer to know how hot the water is uh, which was actually very helpful and I need like I got mesh laundry bags to hold the fleece in when you like put it in the bucket so the whole process was recommended to me from kim at the youthful fiber farm and mill she is one of my spinning teachers she is an amazing spinner and since she also has a fiber mill She's also an expert on just fleece in general and how to process fleece um, and process it for your spinning. So she gave me so many tips and it was all very, very helpful. So I followed her method. I did everything she said and I think it was a big success. So this is my washed fleece, which I'm like, I still can't believe I washed it when I was I washed um, I haven't weighed this and this isn't even all of it I just can't fit it all in here but I pulled off about two and a half ounces from the fleece and then washed that and now I'm I'm excited to wash some more I think I might try to do some more washing this weekend but I mean, the whole fleece is like at least six pounds. So I have quite a bit of fleece washing in my future. But this is like, oh, it's so cute and soft. <laughs> it is It is very soft and like very lofty. And um, this, the sheep's name is Violet. She is a fin. Um, and I... The website, the, sh the farm's website is finsheep.net. I'm like, I don't know if that's, I can't remember now if that is the name of the farm. It's like finsheep or 
if there's a different name for the farm. But it came, I mean, from what I have seen so far of the fleece, it's extremely clean in terms of VM. I did two rounds of washing with power scour and by the second, in the second bucket, it, the water was pretty much clear. Like it was not very dirty. And then the rinse, I did a rinse bucket just to get all of the soap off. Um, but yeah, the when I was taking the bits of the fleece out to measure out how much I wanted to wash, it was so lanolin-y. Like it felt kind of strange at first because I was like, is this, it like kind of feels dirty but also moisturizing, but um, anyway, um, this does not feel like you cannot feel lanolin coming off of this, which I think is a good sign. And yeah, I just like can't believe I washed the fleece. It was such a funny spectacle though in our apartment when I <laughs> was doing it. I decided to do this like on a Wednesday evening. Like it was after work. Um, I think I started at like six o'clock in the evening and then f had this on the drying rack by like eight o'clock. It took me like a good two hours. I mean, six o'clock I was, I sat down and started like pulling out the fleece and I spent a lot of time like really like opening all of it up because I wanted to make sure that all of it got clean. Like I really, I was going through it and doing this to like all of the, the fleece and then putting it in the mesh bag to wash. I don't know that it needs to be opened up that much. I'm gonna play around, but um, so I started doing that and then figuring out the water temperature also took a bit to get right. I think now I can like figure out a more efficient process, but my, um, I think Kim had told me that I wanted at least I think 140 or 160 degree Fahrenheit water for the washes and the rinse bucket. So I, yeah, was trying to figure out the right combo of hot water from our bathtub tap and if I needed to boil water like on the stove and then mix it in. Um, so, so yeah, it didn't take me too long to figure out that our, um, that our hot water only gets to, I think about 120, if that, um, so I needed quite a bit of boiled water from the stove, um, and we have two kettles, and I think next time I'll do like a big pot or something and then dump it in, but maybe multiple pots, um, but yeah, I looked pretty funny. My boyfriend was cooking dinner like the whole time and I was just running from the kitchen to the bathroom, like filling up the kettles, boiling them, taking the kettles to the bathroom, dumping them into buckets, coming back, filling up, <laughs> filling up the kettles again, doing the whole thing over and over again. He was like, what is going on in the bathroom? Um, so I, and I managed to get it pretty hot. I think it was up to, it was in maybe like 170, I think was the temperature of the water. Um, so I felt pretty confident that that was gonna clean off the lanolin of the fleece. So that was good, figured that out. Um, and yeah, managed to have some fleece, a little fluff, little fluff bowl right here. I, I'm probably gonna just run this through my drum carter and then create bats and spin it from there. And yeah, I think that's that's all I've got planned. I feel like the hard part is the cleaning. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm very excited to have like figured out at least I'm starting to figure out 
the process of fleece cleaning in a New York City apartment. Um, and I'm really happy that I managed to actually clean some fleece because I've been sitting on these fleeces for a while and I was like, I don't know, I'm a little nervous. I won't be able to clean it. I was, you know, I don't have like the backyard space or a garage or like that kind of square footage to really get into that sort of thing. Um, but turns out you can do it in an apartment. It just, you can't use your shower or bathtub at the same time. <laughs> I think next I just want to share some acquisitions and talk about some plans. I know I already talked about my plans for May in terms of knitting and spinning. I've got major goals that I want to hit and then um, yeah. But in terms of acquisitions, my sister gifted me these two braids of fiber from a local to her um, fiber dyer called 316 Dye Studio. Um, it says hand dyed yarn and fiber, so I guess they have yarn too. I have not checked out the yarn, but I really loved these um, braids. I think it's the same colorway on two different fibers is what my sister told me. Maybe not, maybe I'm making that up. Maybe they just kind of coordinate. <laughs> um, but this one is Targi, which I love. We love Targi. And then this one is mixed BFL, which we also love BFL. And I've been really curious about spinning up this kind of like mixed fiber where it's, you know, maybe I don't know if it's a gray base or like more of a brown base and white, but they dye over the two different like fiber colors. I don't know if that's making sense. Um, the fleece colors, I guess. Um, so I think it's like really cool. So I'm excited to see how this spins up and those are really cute. So thank you, Paige. Um, and then I do have some yarn acquisitions. I have two sock sets from the La Mercerie Year of Socks subscription, which I've talked about many a time now, I feel like, but I am a subscriber of their Year of Socks, which just means that each month they send out a sock set from a different dyer and it's a surprise every month. So this is April's. Yeah, I'm like, what month is it? This is April's sock set, um, which is so cute. I have never heard of this dyer before. It's Twill and Print Fiber Studio, um, but this is super cute. I love that combo. And um, yeah, I really love the like little blues and the kind of like golden brown with the pink. I love pink anything, so this is really pretty. And I think that red is like gonna be so punchy poppy with that. That'll be fun. And just this morning, I got May's sock set, which is from Moondrake, which I've never used any of Moondrake's yarn before, so that's exciting. Love trying new yarns. <laughs> and this is called Tea Time in the Garden. And let's see, are these both? Oh, so this is a 7525 superwash merino nylon, and this is an 8020 superwash merino nylon. So, um, but yeah, also love this one. I think they're kind of like, I feel like this one's almost a more muted, I guess it is more like garden-y, garden -y, <laughs> more garden-like neutral -y version of this, but I can see similar like, Kind of tones in them um and they've got the little pink speckles and some greens and this is cute so yeah every time i'm like do i just keep making drk everyday socks they fit so well and as i mentioned i've almost got the pattern memorized at this point now so i don't know if i keep making those or if i try something new I think I care more about 
a really snug, tight-fitting, or like well-fitting sock. Um, and I find that I just need like all over ribbing for handmade, for hand-knit socks to fit me well. I don't know, all of my stockinette socks, my vanilla socks, they end up too loose. And I've tried, I've tried adjusting things and I've tried different heels and, but maybe I could give it a go again. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so those are socks that will eventually be knit up, hopefully soon. <laughs> Um, and then my last acquisition that I wanted to talk about, I, well, one is this bag, which I think is so cute. And it is from, I think it's called Mabel. Yes, Mabel. I will link her, obviously. Everything will be linked below, but I started following her on Instagram after seeing her booth at Woolen Folk. And she, I think most of her stuff is made out of uh, quilts. Like vent she takes like vintage quilts and kind of upcycles them into new pieces. So this is like an L.L. Bean style boat tote. Um, and it has this really cute tulip quilt piece together in it. So, I love her. <laughs> um, and it's a great project bag size. But what's in here is a rather large purchase from Pearl Soho. And it is all good wool, their base, which I think they advertise as like a sport weight base. Um, yeah. And it's 100% Andean Highland wool. They just have, they have so many colors of it. So what I'm thinking, let me show you the colors. So I've got this light pink. Let's see if I can find the colorways. Pink Dawn. And we've got the white, which I think is just heirloom white. And... I've got this red prune. It looks more, yeah, it's kind of like more purpley, purpley red in person. I feel like it's looking a little bit more red toned on camera. Um, and then we've got barn door, which is a orangey red. And, oh, I forgot how much I ordered. <laughs> this is fern green. Just a nice green. And let's fix this guy. This is um, apple cider, which is orange, orangey brown. And then I've got a hickory nut, which I think this is one of the undyed colors. So it's kind of like a gray brownish mostly gray um so let me get all these colors together Let's see if i can do that there we go <laughs> i don't know that i'm going to use all of these and this probably won't happen for a while but my thinking with this order was I want to self-draft a sheep colorwork sweater for myself, mostly, um, and this might be a little early on the planning side, but probably to wear to Rhinebeck this fall, um, since that's like the most sheep centered event <laughs> that I'll be going to this year. Um, and if you've been with me for a while, you may remember that last fall I was working on a test knit um, that was, that had like a sheep color work motif and I was knitting it in single strand unspun yarn. 
and the I had a whole bunch of gauge issues and it was just like way way too big did not was not working out so that has since been frogged and ever since then I've been wanting to kind of come up with my own version of that sweater um, and also kind of try my hand at coming up with my own color work motif and yeah so that is <laughs> what that is for and will hopefully happen over the summer obviously it needs to happen before October <laughs> because that's when Rhinebeck is so I just wanted to share that yarn because I have been thinking about it for a while I've been ruminating on ideas and hopefully a sweater will unfold soon after I hit all of my May goals in terms of my knitting that's what I think I will start tinkering on but um okay last thing very last thing is I had a new project idea kind of like hit me this morning as I was sitting and knitting and I was watching um, Jackie and Carmen of Knitting a Good Yarn, their podcast. They recently had an episode come out and they are a hoot. I think Jackie was showing off a few shawls. Actually, they both had shawls that they were working on. If you saw my spring knitting plans, I think is what I called it, video, I mentioned the Sunday morning wrap, um, which is kind of like a shawl wrap scarf from Espostrico. It's a free pattern. And I really, really love that wrap and I really want to make it. And I've had it in my favorites and like kind of my queue for a while, but didn't really know what to knit it with. Um, until this morning when I don't know what it was but I was watching this podcast and I think them just talking about all of their knits and where they find inspiration and obviously all of their new to den knitting is so beautiful that I was like oh I should knit it out of new to den and Surrey held single I mean each one one strand held together is what I meant um because this is the same Surrey that I am using for my big cozy cardi, but I have quite a bit of this. Um, I have a lot of this actually <laughs> that I bought off of my sister because it just wasn't the color that she wanted. Um, and she, I think ordered like a sweaters quantity, but so I have quite a bit and I have yet to hold Nuchden with a strand of mohair or a surrey or something like that. I know a lot of people do it. I've been kind of staying away from mohair recently, um, other than my cardigan. Uh, that was <laughs> that's my one exception. So it kind of hit me out of the blue that I should knit that I, that maybe one strand of Nuchden held with a Surrey would be a good combo for that shawl slash wrap. It is, I believe, a DK weight, so I think there's a lot of potential for it to work really well. Um, I am blanking on this color from Newton, but it is from their one of the more recent shop updates. I think I got it in, um, do they have a March update? I think it was March's update. Yeah, it's just a really nice gray. And I think this will, I don't know, I need to swatch with it, but I just really like how maybe this more purpley Surrey gray will kind of change the color of this gray a little bit. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. It's pretty much the same color palette as my big cozy Cardi. Um, but yeah, and then I think also it being Surrey, it'll make, not that Nutidin is scratchy, it definitely like softens up after blocking, but I think adding the Surrey to 
this more like wooly feeling will um, really make it super duper cozy and just something that I want to like go like that with. <laughs> um, I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but as soon as that yarn combo idea like hit my brain, I was like, oh, I want to cast this on right now. But I am resisting because I have projects that I want to finish. But I am not going to forget about this combo. I like started a new Notion doc in uh, my Notion app, which is just a really nice note taking application um, software if anyone is looking for digital note taking sort of thing. Um, I use Notion for like every every aspect of my life at this point. <laughs> um, especially this year I've been kind of documenting my fiber crafting, knitting, spinning, everything in Notion a little bit more. Um, I still try to do it in Ravelry, but I find that Notion is just, I can like customize exactly what I want to keep track of in a lot of ways, so it's really nice. Um, and yeah, so I made a new doc in my Notion, all of this to say, <laughs> I made a new doc in my Notion of project ideas because I feel like sometimes I will have these yarn combo ideas or specific project ideas, you know, something related to what I want to knit in the future in a certain moment, and then I will forget about it because I'm in the middle of all these other projects that I'm focusing on, so um, trying to be better about making note of like what gets me really excited uh, in terms of like future cast-ons, and this yarn combo is my latest latest excitement <laughs> um but yeah a lot of gray i'm like seeing around me anyway i think my heat is turning on the radiator is making noise so i think that is my cue to wrap this up thank you so much for joining me today if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, I would love for you to introduce yourself in the comments. I will be back with another podcast episode in probably a month. My, I'm thinking that the last, the last Sunday of each month will be my podcast day. So something to look forward to if you're into these podcasts. <laughs> I appreciate it. And... Happy knitting, happy making, and I will talk to you soon.